coherence of it. The idea we have to we have to jail people like Joe Clinton as a, as a, as a warning to other people. Or what is it? Why, why is it? Because he's a threat to society. I mean, if we let him roam around without putting him in jail, he might have gone and done it again. He might have, <laughs> he might have refused to serve in all other sorts of wars. And then where we would be? public wouldn't be safe. There's no sense at all. I always think it must be peculiar for him in a way. When he joined the army and he was going to Afghanistan, he must have thought, well, you know, there is a fair chance that as a result of this I could end up in captivity. And I don't suppose it ever occurred to him that that would be because he'd be jailed by the British Army. <laughs> of course, when they talk about it, so it's just so much about so, so much about the role of the army in Afghanistan and the role of the British Army in recent years as well, when you look at the, the, the reasons why Joe was jailed, he, because you're not supposed to have an opinion. But of course that's not the case. We see soldiers interviewed on the television fairly regularly. The soldiers that say, for whatever reasons, that they think that the war is being won, although it's increasingly hard, I would imagine, to find those sorts of soldiers. But you do hear those. You do hear people, very senior people in the army, such as one that went off to support the Conservatives, saying that he thought the war in Afghanistan could be won. And it seems that you are allowed to have an opinion in the army, as long as it's the one that they want you to have. The opinion you're not allowed to have is the one that is staringly obvious because it's... It's blindingly obvious because you see it every day. Presumably they're not allowed to notice things. Otherwise it might lead them to having an opinion. They're not allowed to notice people don't like them and don't want them being there. They're not allowed to notice that they're actually creating uh, rather than preventing future terrorist threats. So the opinions are only one way. But that does leave the reason, just to quickly, very quickly I suppose, it does leave us wanting to know what the reason is why they're there. And I think one of the amazing things of this, part of its accident, isn't it, that George Bush and his people at the time this war started had a plan. All those things that seem extraordinary now because they're, they all, at least the names, have done away with the full spectrum dominance and the project for the new American century and so on and all these sort of macabre and sinister plans that people like Rumsfeld that are, are so <coughs> happily forgotten now. Uh, but all of these people had that plan. But I think, as Lindsay said, they're now very embarrassed about the fact that this isn't working. And they're certainly unsure about how they can get out of it without making it look as if they're going to lose face. That's what the main aim now of is the war. Oh dear, we mustn't lose face. We must, we must carry on killing these civilians, whether or not it gets leaked that that's happening. We must carry on with British soldiers being killed in order that the people that are at the top of society in a few countries that are prosecuting this war don't lose face. And that's why I think for our side it's so crucial to realise, we think this through, that it's not true that nothing is changing on our side. It could seem like that when you come to the same place and there's much the same people here and so on. You think, is anything changing? And yet when you think about how the last five or six years has gone, it has changed enormously. Whatever you think of Obama, and of course there are you know, many, many reasons to have enormous reservations about Obama, but even so, I think it, is, it would have seemed extraordinary 18 months before he was elected that it would have been possible for there to be a president elected in America who consistently said that he campaigned against the, the Iraq war, which he did. Now that's an extraordinary, whatever you think about Obama's reservations and how he's let a lot of people down and so on, nonetheless, that is an extraordinary change that took place. And it took place because millions of people around the world, inspired by the hundreds of people who met in rooms like this and did all the things that campaigners do, started to change the mood and change the tide and with all the letters that were written to the papers and all the demonstrations that felt as if they might not be working and so on and there must have been many, many times when all of us have gone on things and think, did that really make any discernible difference to the world? And yet, bit by bit, all of these little things and all of the little protests and the tiny little things that people do have combined to make up one huge movement that around the world means that now there is a consensus really on us total consensus, not a unanimous one, but there is a growing consensus that the war is wrong and that it has to be got rid of, and I think the world is a very, very different place now than it would have been if no one had campaigned. They almost certainly would have bombed Iran by now, but for the fact that the millions of people that are around the world campaigned and argued and protested and made whatever gesture they could to say that we don't want this. I mean, I was amazed a few months ago when Salma Yacoub was on Question Time, BBC One's Question Time, and in Wooten Bassett, now there's a tough kid, right? You are a Muslim 
woman, anti-war campaigner in wooden batteries. It's almost like one of these dreams you have. Where you think, oh, no. and, but that happened, and she was in there, and partly because of her own prowess, which is considerable, but also because the, the, the mood is there for this to happen, then she was able to win over the, the crowd to her way of thinking. I don't think there's an enormous gap between the people who are sort of uh, lining the streets in Wooten Bassett and the, the opinions of people who are uh, against the war. We're after the same things, which is less deaths for no apparent reason after, after all. And for that reason, I think surely we have to go on campaigning against the war, firstly because that's the right thing to do, but also because we are, bit by bit, making a huge difference. Thank you very much.